Hey guys, welcome to the show. In this video, I'm going to give you five practical tips to dominate fantasy football. These are ultra practical. Implement them, use them. And there's a lot of common sense here. They're logical, common sense tips you want to implement and understand. This is some foundational stuff that's going to help you guys dominate 2023 fantasy football. So before I get into this, guys, make sure you guys do smash the thumbs up here, providing value daily, trying to put out multiple videos a day, real shorts everywhere. Follow on IG as well at Fantasy Football Counselor. Make sure you guys do smash that thumbs up and drop a comment below. Let me know what you guys think of these tips. Were they helpful? Are they practical? Because some of them are common sense, but you guys got to understand, guys, in this day and age, common sense is not that common, which I'm about to explain here in this video. So make sure you guys are subscribed, leave a thumbs up, and drop a comment below. Let's make this ultra interactive as we are full flow fantasy football, getting you guys ready for the draft. Out here again, beautiful sky, sunny day again. And I like to get away from the studio a little bit and put my feet in the grass here, do some grounding, get in touch with nature. It's very good. Good for the soul, good for the body. So that's why I'm out here, guys. If people ask, why are you out here? Because I am. And I got this really good mic that helps as well. So five tips to help you crush your league. And if you want all the optimal players drafted each round, sleepers, breakouts, optimal players drafted each round, grab the 16 round drafts, which I've linked it below here or head on over to thefantasyfootballcouncil.com. This is the truth, guys. No consensus can shoot his rankings. This is the truth, all right? Let's get to these tips. First tip, all right, guys, this guy, this one's going to hurt a little bit, but I got to say it. Nobody cares. Your mom doesn't really care. Well, maybe some people's parents care. I don't know about that, but, you know, your wife doesn't care. Your husband doesn't care if you're a girl, um, you know, your, your sister, your brother, your league mates definitely don't care. They want to they want to tear you up and bury you in your fantasy football leagues. They want to destroy your league, you know, destroy you. Um, nobody cares, guys. This is about your team. So it's so important. And a lot of you guys, I commend you for being on this channel because a lot of people are just following the herd. And it's, it's up to you guys to build this team. Again, this is your baby. This is your team, not anybody else's. Nobody really cares about your team the way you should. And Again, this is a bottom line thing. You're saying, well, Joe, this is common sense. It is. But if this is what I'm telling you. It's like anything with your body or your relationship or whatever it is, your health. If you don't care about it, nobody's really going to push you. So you got to make sure that you do get the right information, that you are absorbing the correct information, that you're not doing the recency bias from last year, that you're not listening to all these pop-up fantasy football channels. Because I've been at this heavy since 2015, the first vlogger on Instagram. I know what I'm talking about. I built my channel because I knew things were going wrong and the way advice was being given. That's why I built it. So first and foremost, it sounds like you do care about your team and that's the main thing. So that's tip number one. Nobody cares. Just be aware of that. It's just being aware of something. So let's just say, you know, my biceps aren't as big as I want them to be, for example. I'm aware that they're not as big as they want to be, so I'm going to work on it. So the fact if you know that nobody cares... That's a good thing. So you got to focus more on your team. Just be aware, right? It seems like everybody else giving advice is hedging their bets, right? They, they say, oh, well, I think this guy's going to be a pretty good fifth rounder. Well, that's where his ADP is going to be. So everybody in the industry is just hedging their bets. That's not how I do it, guys. I roll a straight shooter. This is who you draft. This is why I like them. This is the way it is, right? And you got to be a straight shooter with yourself and your team because nobody else cares, all right? Care about your team. That's the first thing. Put time and effort and good research into it and don't, just don't, don't draft on what everybody and all these pop-up fantasy footballs are, are saying because they don't care about your team. The consensus don't care about you. The four-letter networks don't care about your team. They're just doing copy and paste, diarrhea, vomit stuff. They, don't, they just want to make a quick buck and they don't care about your team, okay? Number two, tip number two, all right? ADPs will destroy you. If you simply draft based on ADP, if you don't take a chance, if you don't reach a little bit here and there, you're not going to win, okay? Now, and that goes both ways. So if you draft a player at ADP and you haven't done your research, going back to the first one, nobody cares. you got to care about your team. I'll give you an example last year. Swift was a first-round pick, top eight. And I did the research. I said, years to I was were not wowed. You know, the Lions don't really produce top running backs. You know, they just don't. I haven't seen it for years. And, you know, at the end of the day, Swift just hasn't gotten it done. He can't stay healthy. I looked at all these variables. I said, he's way too expensive. She's not going to pay for him, okay? And sure enough, he busted. Cooper Cup, consensus first overall pick last year, along with John the Taylor. I simply faded them because they were both coming off astronomical pinnacle years that were very hard to duplicate. So 
I came to the conclusion, I looked at the facts, I said, I'm just going to draft somebody else, somebody who's going on an upwards curve instead of these guys who are already on top going on a downwards curve. you got to know where the curves are going with certain players. So ADP is tip number two. ADPs will destroy you if you simply draft predicated on that and do everything that you've done last year. So again, that's an example. So for example, this year, everybody's on the Eckler train. Let's give it, let's talk about an example. Everyone's drafting Eckler number one. The Conchises were doing a draft on the Four Letter Network the other day. I wasn't watching but everyone was DMing me and I was watching this thing and I'm just like, dude, they're just, nobody's talking about like, everyone's like Eckler first overall, second overall, third overall. I think you went top three, which is, you know, they did everything that you were, that they want you to do, right? Supposedly supposed to do. And, you know, Eckler, they're not talking about the fact that they had uh, Joe Lombardi there, right? Forcing them, force feeding checkdowns. The the wide receivers were dismantled. Uh, Quentin Johnston wasn't there, right? I mean, this is a whole new offense, guys. They brought in Kellen Moore. They're going to throw down field more. They're going to have to utilize their wide receivers more, they, you know? It's just crazy. It's a totally different offense. And if the Chargers believed in Eckler, they would have paid him this year, which they didn't. Something to consider, guys. He's not as good as you think. They didn't even utilize their backups. You know, Spiller, uh, Kelly, these guys are capable backs. They just didn't get utilized. You almost think that um, Lombardi had some sort of special relationship with Eckler. It was really crazy. But either way, ADPs will destroy you. Don't follow the recency bias. Again, Rashad Penny's another one. If you drafted on ADP, you would have drafted Penny over Walker last year, okay? Another example, ADPs will destroy you. You got to think outside the box because, again, back to tip number one, ADPs will kill you, okay? Um, and uh, tip, by tip, tip number one, nobody cares, okay? So, again, if you drafted Penny based on ADP last year, missed out on Walker, too bad, so sad. ADPs will destroy you. That was number two. Number three, this is an important one. Again, this is common sense, foundational, logical stuff. Have no fear, guys. I mean, again, going back to tips one and two, you got to be a little ruthless, a little relentless. And again, and that goes back to ADPs will destroy you. If you're just following ADP and you're and you're you're scared and you're just doing what everyone else does, you're never going to succeed. You're going to do what everyone else does. And at that point, it's just like who has the better team? You haven't thought out. You know, like if everyone drafts on ADP, one person is just going to you know law of averages numbers, common sense math, one team's just going to outscore another team. But you want to destroy your team. You want to think outside the box. You want to aim high on the depth chart, right? So number three, have no fear. It's okay to reach one or two rounds if you really want a player. It's okay to, you know, do some extra research. It's okay to get 16 rounds. Jump in, guys. Take a leap, right? Grab the 16-round draft solution. Use code SMASH to save, by the way, uh, if you haven't got it. Um, again, take a take a leap, man. Just take a, take a risk, jump, and, uh, you know, jump into fantasy football and do it differently. Don't do what everyone else does, okay? Have no fear. Tip number three, a little common sense, okay? Here's a practical tip for number four, and you've heard me talk about it on all my podcasts, is load up on running backs. I cannot emphasize this enough, especially for 2023. Some people are saying, well, this is the year where you don't want to load up on running backs because the wide receivers are so good earlier on. And you can get running backs later. You can get running backs later if you know who the sleepers are. I think Javante Williams is a great sleeper. I think there's a ton of other great running back sleepers you can get later. Okay, I know who they are. And if you want them all, 16-round draft solution, link below. Um, but you definitely still want to load up on running backs to make sure you have those workhorse running backs. Because if you don't, it is a bit of a crapshoot. Yes, you get Javante Williams round five as your RB1 or two. But he's a little more risky coming off that knee. Yes, you get Cam Akers, but years to wow us were not wowed. Yes, you get Miles Sanders, new offense, you know, downgrade team. You know, there's all these risks, right? Which, again, I don't mind taking risks, but these aren't smart risks, okay? Because you've now basically pushed away the most scarce position and faded it in the early rounds. And now you're taking risks at running back. But that's the wrong type of risk to take, right? So I'm saying have no fear. Tip number three, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, you know, taking the right risks, okay? So load up on running backs, guys. I cannot emphasize enough to you how important this thing is, okay? How important it is to secure those running backs or those workhorses because there's only like nine of them. After that, they're few and far between, guys. So load up on running backs early. Now for this year, we're talking fantasy football draft strategy, right? We're talking fantasy football draft tips here. You can integrate a wide receiver in there. I'll give you an example, a by John, by Jan, and then you get Garrett Wilson, then you go to Jameer Gibbs or something like that. Then there's other running backs you can get after. You could very well do that. 
But all I'm saying is you don't want to miss out on those running backs in the first, second, and third round because it does get slim and trim after, and it is the most scarce position. We see it more and more often. Running back committees are more and more abundant. These teams are not afraid to have two good running backs. Example, New York Jets are doing it right now. And I wouldn't say Dalvin Cook is good at this point in his career, but they have Brees Hall. They didn't really need – they don't actually didn't really – they didn't need him at all. They did not eat Dalvin Cook. Same with the Patriots. They didn't need Zeke Elliott washed up at the end of his career. Completely pointless. Now – Zeke and Dalvin Cook aren't good enough to be starters anymore. They're done. They're washed up. They're old. They can't finish seasons. They're declining, right? But they are good enough to be pests and carry the load and take away, you know, very important volume and crucial fantasy points from your starters like Brees Hall and Stevenson. So, again, that's why it's so important to try to get those workhorses early because, you know, they come off fast and then you're looking at a committee, okay? Okay. Tip number five and the last one, again, make sure you guys do leave a thumbs up. Let me know if this is making sense to you. I'm back in the common sense corner here with you guys because no one else is co- telling you common sense. They're hedging their bets. They're copying and paste rankings. Nobody really cares about your team. Back to tip number one here. Uh, they really don't. So I'm out here. I really care about your team. And I built my brand on actually helping you guys win. So, again, take this advice. Hopefully it's helping you. Drop a comment. Drop a thumbs up. Help the channel. Last tip here. Very simple, guys. I know it's common sense, but so many people do not do this because some people are sending me their rosters. And I'm like, where's your backup tight end? Where's your backup quarterback? Where's that fifth wide receiver that you need? Because that looks a little thin. Where's that extra depth at running back? I'm not seeing the depth guys that I want to see, but I'll tell you this, guys. Have a backup plan for a backup plan. What I mean by that, if you're in a one-quarterback league, have two quarterbacks. If you're in a two-quarterback league, have three quarterbacks. This is very important. Why do I always have two quarterbacks in a one-quarterback league? Three reasons. Lack of performance, potentially. If you draft the right quarterback, that shouldn't be an issue. Number two, you want to cover those bye weeks. And number three, this is very important, and God forbid, a potential injury. They happen. You always want to cover, grab your team at ace quarterback and anchor them with a great backup that's got some upside, okay? Example, Justin Herbert, Jared Goff. Example, Trevor Lawrence, Kenny Pickett. Two good combos. I just gave you guys some free extra advice there for you, okay? Smash the thumbs up for that. So, again, I explained this in 16 rounds. Also a tight end, a backup plan for a backup plan, okay? If you miss out on Kelsey, it's a crapshoot after that. You're basically rolling the dice. So you might as well, guys... You might as well get two tight ends. One's a safe one, one's a backup upside guy, okay? Backup plan for a backup plan. Execute. Running backs. That's why you got to get those running backs early, those workhorses, and cover yourself. Backup plan for a backup plan. Some guy gets hurt. Some guy is now part of a committee. Oh, no. Some guy gets injured. Oh, no. Well, there is no oh, no, because you've covered yourself. Why? Because tip number one, you care about your team, okay? And you had no fear. You took a chance. You load it up on those running backs, all right? These are five big tips, guys. I know, you know, some of them seem like common sense, but believe me, nobody's doing this. They're just grabbing a magazine or they're looking at consensus rankings or they're just following ADP and they're doing what everyone else does, okay? One more thing I want to say here. Uh, I'll give you a quick example. I'm not, I'm not sure at this point in the game how much of a breakout he's going to be, but I have him on all my teams. The guy I'm talking about was Tank Dell. Nobody knew who he was. He was like 100th amongst wide receivers. Now going into week two of preseason, everyone's talking about him. He's on the news. He's getting a lot of volume from C.J. Stroud. I was talking about this guy back in May when he got drafted, and C.J. Stroud asked this, asked this guy to get drafted. So I have him on all my teams, and I was drafting back in, in May, June, July. Okay, So what I'm trying to say here with this guy is that if you were dra- – let's say this news didn't break out and you were drafting back in July or even now – Let's just say, you know, you were drafting on ADP. You wouldn't have drafted this guy. He'll become a waiver wire wonder. But you did your research. You cared about your team. And you got Tank Dell. And you've got that guy. That's what I'm saying. And he's going to break out last year, right? Nobody liked the Monroe St. Brown. He's coming around for round four. I'm like, this guy is a true workhorse. A true, uh, he's going to get a lot of volume. Loved him. Grabbed him while other people are grabbing other guys. Like Tyler Boyd's of the world, right? Don't be afraid to take a risk, guys. It may not look like the cool thing to do, but if you've done your research and you cared about your team and you got a 16-round draft, so you shouldn't have listened to my content, you'll be light years ahead of the sheep, okay? I want to do this practical video. I'm going to try to do more of these guys as we head into draft season right now. We're in draft season, but as we head closer to the season here, I'll try to do these more practical videos for you, have these chats, because I think people need this talk because everybody's so caught up in the consensus because sheeps and stuff, not going to help you guys win your leagues, all right? Thumbs up, guys. Grab 16 rounds. Hopefully, I can see you guys in the Patreon. Go to patreon.com forward slash FFCouncil for direct analysis. All right, guys, we'll talk soon. Grab 16 rounds. Thumbs up. I'm out.